J-S-A-S-T. All right, there you go. All right, so my presentation's on JavaScript abstract syntax tree. Um, JavaScript is, you know, much more than just a text on a file with JS extensions. You know, it's 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 got form, it's got function, it's got a soul, if you will, right? You gotta be able to access it. There are things you can do with it. Um, so that's why the abstract syntax tree exists. A um, little background on it. Um, Dave Herman, who uh, is from Mozilla, he um, exposed the SpiderMonkey API. Um, that's the job Mozilla's JavaScript parser. Um, Expose that in API as this nice manageable API, which kind of caught on and became the de facto standard um, for representation and manipulation of JavaScript source code. Um, he started, or I guess the Spider Monkey actually started out in, in Netscape uh, way back in the day, um, and then kind of just uh, became Mozilla's thing now. Um, and then because of because it became the standard, they have this ES3 specification. Um, where, you know, because we have so many parsers um, actually adhering to this, they needed to kind of make it all standard and make it all official. So if you have any kind of problems, they have a GitHub where you can submit issues and they try to get those resolved pretty quickly. Um, so let's talk about parsers. So what parsers mean is just you have a, a JavaScript line, a string, you know, like that, like console log, hello world. What that turns into is that nice little tree. It all starts with a program, and um, right below that, you have expression statement, call expression, and member expression, uh, which has console and log as its nodes. And then you have arguments, which you've passed in. Um, anyone see any problem with this? Just looking at this. It's right around here. Just looking at this, you don't really know which one is what, right? So you have console and log. As far as this this tree is concerned, we're looking at you know it could be log dot console or console dot log. We don't really know, right? Um, we can make that a little bit better. Let's talk about how we generate that first off. So I'm going to be primarily focused on Esprima, which is um, this it it. it started this JavaScript parsing and JavaScript revolution, almost. Um, so it, it, it follows the uh, SpiderMonkey API. Um, so you have, so you pull it in, um, you have your code as a string, and uh, you say esprima.parse, pass in the code, and then uh, it'll take in options. And because all these parsers, they, they stick to the SpiderMonkey API, they're all going to look something similar to that, your library.parse, and then the code. Um, what that gives us is this thing of beauty right here. So if you look at this, um, you have this JSON object which starts out with program, um, and then it has expression statement, expressions. So there you can see that the first one is a callee, which has a member expression of type name console, and then that has a property called log. So following this, you know which one is the actual object and which one's the function that you call. And then you have the arguments passed down, so that's how you generate that. Um, so powers of power of AST, um, we've all used one or two of these. How many of us have used like all of them? Probably not everyone, right? But Babel, we know what that is. Istanbul code coverage, we know what that is. CoffeeScript, we've kind of played around with that idea a little bit. Uglify JS, we've done that. JS Code Shift is um, Facebook's um, awesome little utility where they have this this code mod. For migration, so if if they update their their uh, React code base to go from like 14 to 15 now, um, they can just write a little module, uh, just plugs into that code shift, runs through a code, and just updates everything to be uh, React 15 um, capable or compatible. And then ESLint, JSLint, we've all used those and love them, right? Um, so Babel also has their little thing where you can write plugins directly in Babel. And here's this awesome example that uh, uh, I found out during the last JavaScript conference. Um, I'll read it to you. Uh, so Bob hates function declarations with a passion. Nobody knows why. Bob loves to enforce this on his coworkers. He snuck this plugin into their build system. 
to force this tyrannical code style. So the idea here is you have a uh, function declaration like that, function foo, um, and that converts it to var foo equals function. So this, this does it build time. So you'll write your code regularly, and when you run through the build process, it'll actually convert that at the end. So if we look at this code, all we're doing is we're, we're, we're saying, all right, so we'll pull in the transformer and then the, the types. And then you'll, you'll see this a lot while working with ASTs, this uh, visitor pattern, where you will, um, you'll only focus on the nodes that you care about. And you'll ignore everything, just go through them like they don't exist. Um, so this, this makes it a little bit nicer because it's, it's more, um, it, it doesn't really care what you pass it. If it can't handle it, it'll just ignore it, right? So, um, so there we're saying, um, I only worry about function declaration. That's all I care about. And if I find a function declaration while going through this AST, I will first get the ID from it, and then I'll change the type from a function declaration of this node to a function expression, and then I'll null out the ID. And then at the end, I will return this var with a function declaration, and I'll pass in the old ID because I don't want to change that ID. I want to keep everything the same. I just want to change it from a function declaration to an expression with a var. And when you run through that, that's what you get at the end. So with this, you can do a lot more now. Like before, if we if you wanted to do something like this, we'd have to write it in I don't know regular expressions, which you know everyone loves and everyone can read, right? So, and then if you do them wrong, they can be very very slow and very very annoying to work with. Um, so let's go through some demo. Uh, if I can switch somehow. There it goes. Okay, so I have this little merge sort example that I found online. Um, oh, it's cutting. There you go. Helpful. Um, so anyway, so this is implemented by Nicholas Zakas, who's the guy that started uh, ESLint. Um, smart guy. Um, anyway, so he he made this uh, this program, this merge sort algorithm, uh, and I pulled out a few things. So I made uh, these things global, and then I added a little comment up top, just just for this example. So well, let's start out with just looking at what happens when you call parse and we'll do let's do let's do this console.log hello world our trusty hello world example and then down here I'm just taking this um, so I'm gonna assign that to a variable called AST and down here I just have this little output file which will just take that and output it um, if I save that and I run, so let's say save to hello world output.js. And if we look at this, we get this little, uh, um, man, it's cutting it off the top. There you go. I can see it. So it'll, it'll generate this AST, this uh, JSON object, so which you can see is identical to well, what I had in the previous thing. Um, so. There you go. That's all you need to do. Uh, just dot parse. Um, you can give it um, some. What is it? There you go. You can give it a source type, and this just says, "Hey, this is just a ES5 um, module or ES5 code." Um, the other one is a module, which is ES6. So. Uh, Evaluate them differently and put them differently. You can do that. It's not really a requirement. Um, because of that, all the different parsers have a little different options. Some say one. Some some might just say like source versus source type. So they're not quite standard, I don't think. Um, but for the most part, they're they're fairly standard. Okay. So let's actually pull in my merge sort .js, and here. Uh, come on. Okay. Come in the stream. I did something. There you go. I'm all better now. Okay, so we're gonna do start read file sync, and then we'll give it the file name. If I save this, and if I run this. 
um, we get this. Nope. Oh, I'm opening the wrong thing. There you go. That's what I want. So we get this uh, giant AST. Um, and as you can see, like it's it's not different nodes have different objects below them. So it's not, you know, straightforward cutthroat, all right, this is what I have, this is what I have, this is what I have. It's gonna be very, very different based on what type of node you have. So let's do something a little bit cool with this. So so since I added a few global variables, let's actually find those global variables. So first off, we're gonna create a variable called global variables. I'm gonna create a global. Cannot. And then here, we're going to use uh, another library called ES Traverse. Um, and what this allows us to do is traverse the node up and down. And this also um, sticks to the uh, visitor pattern, so it makes things pretty nice. Traverse takes in an AST and an object. Um, so ES Traverse, it has um, two properties here. Um, it has an enter, which takes a callback of node and parent. And then it has a leave, which is the same thing. So you can, when you visit a node, you can either say, all right, when I enter, do this. When I leave, do this. I don't really have a good example of when I would use a leave. I haven't really been able to find one. Maybe there is. Um, I've just done everything on enter for the most part. So we'll just stick with that. And here, what I want to do is um, say, let's see. So if node.type equals, and if you look right here, we have um, a program. And then right below that, we have a variable declaration. And variable declaration has declaration array, which identifies all the different variables that we have, right? So we're going to say if type equals variable, where would you see declaration, and parent dot type equals program, because that's the only way we'll, we would get a global variable, right? Everything else would be underneath something else. So we're going to say, um, so this has an array. So we're going to say uh, node.declarations dot for each. Um, global variables dot push um, item dot name, I think. Yep. Then we could also, down below, we can say, let's see. I don't want to do this. Well, all right. We'll just say console.log down here. Then. Um, well, we can put a. Is it going to be item.id.names? Perhaps item. Just looking at the J. Uh, ID. Yes, you are correct. Mm. Yep. Um, so if that's the case, then we will go through this. If not, we won't even bother with logging anything out. We'll say global variable are ideally found, and then we can say. Join and we can join it. And if we run this, yeah, you're missing a parent. Who am I? Oh, right here. Making me anxious. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, you know, live code examples—they never work quite the way you want them to work. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So it says global variables found, result IL IR. Um, it did not complain about the other variable, which I had down here, which is middle, since that's not a global variable. So it strictly found all the globals um, and then reported to you. At this point, you could say, all right, I'm done. 
I found global, so I'm not even going to compile anything else. Um, I'll throw errors and then do everything the SLint does. Right. So um, sometimes sometimes you want a little bit more information on globals um, or on your reports. Uh, just getting a goal variable is not enough. You want to know where it's happening. Um, so Esprima, with its options, you can do uh, you can turn on locations, which will give us now if we run this. You can see everything has a location um, array or an object. Mm -hmm. So with this, you can use that to figure out exactly where this is happening, right? Um, just modify this a little bit. So name, um, uh, let's do line, uh, comma, and it is items, item dot, 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 line, and then call this so it's a little bit readable dot id dot I will also do so it's just on your line. Hmm. Might have been a bad idea because I'm pushing the whole thing, so I could just concatenate it and there you go. Uh, that should be it. Yay! So, well, it, I missed something somewhere. All right, here. All right, a little bit better. Apart from the spaces, <laughs> shut up, Mike. <laughs> shut up, Mike. Okay, there you go. All right, happy, yeah. happy. There, there. God, you guys are brutal. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, we are totally. Hey, I'm writing a linter, so I should run my. So now it's telling us that you know we have global variables. Result is on line two, column four. IL line three, column four. Line 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 four, column four. So we get a lot of information about our code from using ASTs. Um, so uh, another wonderful, wonderful um, limping rule that we all love is not having a space here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's actually implement that as well. Because, you know, That's why not? Enough. What? Let's not no, let's do it. I, I think I want to do it. So uh, let me make this a little bit better. Actually read. Catch comment, and we'll say true here. Um, so now what this will do is if you just run this as is, um, You can see at the very bottom, there is another array called comments, which has all the comments with the location, the range, everything you'd want to know about them, right? Um, so here, if you wanted to um, catch that and make that a rule, we'll say if uh, node.comments, and we'll do node.comments dot for each um, function item. I'm going to say if item dot value dot char at zero does not equal a space, and we'll say console dot log missing space before comment. What? Oh, um, line. Let's see. Item dot. Uh, Start dot line, then item dot start dot. So the problem that I found with um, locations for comments is that it will just give you the first where it starts with the slashes, but that's not where you want the space, right? You want the space what? Oh, local, local. I would have found that. 
Social Safety Fans the other way. Ah, crap. Missing Spassy. <laughs> ESL, ESL, ESL. Um, anyway, so um, what that gives us is the wherever it, this comment starts, which is column zero, but we really want column two, right? That's where it really starts. So I mean, you can you can do it however you want. I'm not quite sure how e so, what ESLint yeah, does. So the parser is basically saying that the whack whack. It's like, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's where that's where the comment is. Yeah, yeah. So right here, it's saying missing space before a comment at line one, column two. Um, we could add it just in line here as well. Um, blah. And then we run this again. It's going to give you both of those. So line 13 at column 34. So you know exactly where to have the space. Um, like this. And it's no longer complaining about it. So now you know how that's done. You can go rip it out if you want. <laughs> OK, so we've gone through and traversed the node and then kind of did reporting on it. Now let's actually go through and replace something. So we wrote this in ES5, right? Um, it's a pretty dumb little program. It doesn't really have very many things to modify. But we could definitely convert all these to const, right? Um, so one way to do that would be just in here in your traverse function. So we can say if uh, node dot, let's see, what was it? Hmm, yeah. Kind equals var. Because if you look in our AST, um, there you go, kind is var. Mm -hmm. So that's what determines what it is. So we'll just say um, node.kind equals, whoops, const. And we'll just assign it, and then we'll, we'll call it good. So the only problem with that is this will change it here, but we can't really see what it generates. So for that, we'll use another library called ESCodeGen. And this is another one of those that uh, adheres to the SpiderMonkey API. So you know how, you know, it's, it's you know what the format's going to be more or less. So we're going to say, um, let's do this right here. Code equals es code gen dot generate. And we'll pass it BST and then it also taken some options if we want to give it any. I don't think I want to give it any for now. And then I will uncomment that. Uh, let me just do this. Okay. So up here, let's make this a little bigger. And then we will also open up this one. So here you saw that it turned all those into const, and also this into const. Since we didn't restrict it to anything like global or anything inside a function, we just said find a variable that's well. You find any variable, just turn it into const. So this is more or less ES6 now. <laughs> Simply, you mean? Um, so that has some logic to it, right? So if it's been used somewhere, if it gets reassigned. You have to write a little bit more. You have to go through some of those nodes some more to determine if it has been used. If it hasn't been used, keep a, keep track of all the items that do get reassigned. Make those lets. It's a little bit involved, which I thought about trying to implement. And I'm like, well, that's going to go well over an hour just to get that working. Let's not even worry about that. But the thing with this is it doesn't really care. We'll make this Cartman. That's our variable type. Yep. It's no longer a var. It's ES8 now. <laughs> there you go. Now all the variables have become Cartman. There you can see it now. That one and including that one. So power of ASTs. You can do whatever you want with it now. And it, it makes things easier. Um, let's go back to something. Whoops. Something sane. Um, so with ES Traverse, yeah, you can modify things in line just as you're traversing a node. But ES Traverse also provides this handy little function called replace. 
and it's 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 a little different. Um, it still takes in an AST, and it's still an object. Um, and the replace also has the enter and the leave visitor pattern. Um, takes a node and a parent, just like you know the other ones. And here, the idea is node. Well, say if node dot type equals variable declaration. So here, the idea is that you return what you want this node to be after, because you're calling it replace. So it, you will return an object instead of just modifying it in line. So what I'll do is I'll say var new node equals node, and then new node dot kind equals let, and then I'll return the new node. So I won't change anything about this object. I'll just change the kind, and I'll just return it. Um, I took the other one out of there. Whoops. And then I run this again. I assume if you're not careful, you can lose channel mode and stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful about what you're modifying and what you're returning. I mean, I don't, I haven't tried it, but I don't know if you can just return something like that and then just say kind equals let. If that will even do it, or if it'll completely screw up the EST where you can't even get anything decent out of it. I haven't tried that yet. I'm scared to try it right now. Uh, controller. Okay, if I do that, see if it's, it's blow up. Where is it? My cursor. Yeah, it blew up. It's probably because I tried to code gen. Probably. I yeah. That. Didn't have that. Also missing a semicolon. Oh. Semicolons aren't important. Oh, 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 this is an object. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's an object. No, that's uh, replace, yep. It blew up on replace, unknown call type. It didn't know unknown so node it type null. So yeah, I have, to, I have to build out this node to actually modify it and then return a new node from it. So I do have to stick to the API. I can't just say, oh, yeah, I'll just return an empty object and then expect it to actually populate it. So there you go. That, Satisfies that curiosity. <laughs> I hadn't read it before, so. Um, now, ES Code Gen, since this is another one of those that uh, follows the SpiderMonkey API, it also has those um, objects that it can stick to. Um, some of the niceties of it is you can give it a format that you wanted to generate it with, um, like indent. So I, I want to say indent style is going to be, I don't know, three, four, five spaces. The heck of it, why not? And then, what, where? Oh, yeah. And compilers, man. In an object, bro. In an object, bro. <laughs> um, I have that as one of my comments. There you go. So now this has one, two, three, four, five. And if you're, I don't know. Obviously, I mean, you could give it like five thousand and see it just. Um, you know, actually, you can. There you go. Yeah, instead of spacing, yeah. Curve and curve. Curve Ta-da! <laughs> so yeah, you, you can do some pretty crazy things with this. So let, let's go back to something saying like two spaces. It's not fun or you know hilarious, but it's it's functional. Um, something I don't know if you guys noticed or not. Um, I had comments up there on my left on my actual file, but I have no comments here, right? And really, if if you're using this as a build process, you don't want comments. Right. What's the point of comments? But if you're if you're just transpiling it, um, and then you want to actually see what it does, you can turn on comments. And because I have included comments um, when I parsed um, ES Code Gen, I can say, "Hey, attach comments as well." So I actually see that too. E and T true. What the heck? I am. There you go. I wanted you guys to be able to see it. 
So now you have, yeah, yeah. So now it's also including the comments. Um, go back to this. So parsers, I showed you a Sprema. Um, this is the one that does the parsing and parsing JavaScript and JavaScript revolution. Um, Esprit is another one that is pretty much a fork of Esprima, but it was created by the ESLint guys because um, Esprima wasn't implementing the ES6 features fast enough. So they were like, you know what, screw it, we'll fork it, and then we'll add ES6 features like right from the get-go. Um, that's what that uses. Acorn used to be something that Babel used, and then they went and made their own because they were like, well, this isn't doing everything we want, so we're going to use this. And then Flow is another that I've seen floating around, um, no pun intended. Or you can write your own. You know, you have the parser API. Um, you know what kind of nodes it needs. You know what kind of nodes it generates. Super simple. Well, maybe time consuming, but. And then for traversing, um, you have ES traverse, which is what I, what I showed. And there's also ES recurse. And then there's ES query. ES query apparently is a little funky in the way it does things. It apparently goes like the whole jQuery route somehow, um, or CSS ish route of finding nodes and modifying those. I haven't used it. There's also Acorn Walk, which is what Babel was using, I guess. Um, you can write your own as well, once again, um, SpiderMonkey API. And then code generation, we have CodeGen, and that's it. That's the only decent one that has ever existed. That's pretty much the only one that anyone's ever created. That's well, a few people have created, but. Thanks, JavaScript for doing only one. Doing only one, right? Um, you can write your own. Good luck. It's complicated, I'm sure, as you could have imagined. Um, all the different rules and everything. Um, if you can do it, power to you. Um, some resources, so SpiderMonkey API, Esprima. It has an awesome demo where you can, like, it, it, they have different things that you can do with it and just kind of drop down and it'll immediately show it on their left. ASD Explorer is pretty awesome in, you know, showing you the JSON and then this joint js.com, which you use to actually show the tree if you're a visual person. Um, Let's actually look at um, the AST Explorer. Um, I really, really like this because I gave it a, a code right here. It immediately gave me this, you know, all that. Um, so one thing that AST, uh, just normal AST doesn't do, is if I do this, you can't really know. So I have a right literal and then a left literal with an operator. But there isn't anything telling me that, hey, I'm missing a semicolon. Like, nothing changes other than what I've highlighted, pretty much. I kind of lost that. I have location, start and end, but that still doesn't really change at all. Because it's, it's just looking at this block, right? It doesn't care about anything else. So AST has this awesome, awesome thing in one of the settings, which is called tokens. And what it does is if you look at the AST again, there is this other tokens array that it throws in there, which literally breaks down your entire code into individual tokens. So here, if I put in a semicolon, there's a punctuator token right here, which tells me it's a type punctuator, what the range is, and what the location is. So now, if I were to do something like function hello, return, return answer, um, and if I look at the tokens here, um, I can see that the keyword function, there needs to be a punctuator there, right? Um, and if I take this out, the top AST body doesn't change, but the punctuator changes. Traversing it is pretty simple, same way we've always done it. I mean, come on, this is just JavaScript, guys. Just text on a file with a JS extension, right? Come on. So any questions? So that, that's just basically exposing like the earlier parts of when you're parsing, right? Because can't remember what it's called, but it, has, it literally goes character by character and like builds up what those are, which is why it's like keyword identifier. Tokenizing. Token. Tokenizing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the last thing is afterwards. Is that, analyze. Yep. Right. But so. just the way we kind of looked at um, looked at uh, comments here. Yeah. Um, where we go? So basically, uh, if no dot comments, we can just say if no dot tokens. If we have tokens, go through the tokens. We'll find punctuator, and then if or we'll find all the um, 
a keyword, and if keyword does not precede punctuator of type semicolon, error. So it's kind of exposing some of the earlier steps we'd yes. be doing to you. Well, if you wanted to do anything with braces, yeah, yeah you'd, you'd have you'd to do it that. through the toaster. Yep. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And really, also, like another thing with this is it doesn't really tell you if like this is no different than this yeah. versus this. Yeah. Right? Where the space is, because the location, start location, stays the same for both of these things. Um, but it doesn't tell you what's in between. So that's where the tokens come yeah, in. Yeah, to an AST, that doesn't mean anything, it, which yeah. is why you can't, you don't have access to the braces anymore, because yep. the AST doesn't care. It doesn't care. It's an it abstract matter. syntax tree. Yeah, it doesn't it's, matter yep. at that point anymore. So power of ASTs, you can build some cool things. Um, now you know how some of these tools that we've been using, like Black Magic, we don't, we didn't know how they were doing it, but that's how they were doing it. I guess the other thing that's kind of interesting to think about is it's not just JavaScript that's doing this kind of stuff. Like most languages are realizing, it's actually really useful to expose this mm -hmm. stuff. Like that's what Roslyn lets you do. Like Roslyn suddenly makes the compiler not a black box and lets you kind of muck around yep. in there and do stuff. Uh, other languages like. Rust that I've been playing around with does a similar thing. You can yeah. like, get access to it unless you do some pretty interesting things. Yeah. So how does this benefit you guys being able to parse it, traverse it, and generate? I think those are so ideas. one so thing we one can thing, teach a computer to write our JavaScript for us. Well, no, one thing I wrote down, especially for JavaScript world. So in C sharp, we've got tools to do refactoring for us, right? So you can just say rename this thing and it'll go and find all that stuff. Like when Buota said they had the JS code shift, that's basically what they're doing, is they're parsing it and saying, OK, yep. but we're not going to do this by hand. We're just going to automate yep. because it all over. Because in old um, React 13, I want to say, it was like um, uh, something, something, to react dot create class, yep. right? And that turned into extends uh, react re act re act dot. You lose things when you do that, as opposed to the create class. But yes, but yeah, the whole lexical this and all that. Yeah. But yeah, we have proper initialization for that. We don't care about that. So, which is what they're probably doing, saying, "Oh, well, this is yeah." So let's go to, through and look at the AST to yep. be able to. So they can easily operate. modify this into this, and not have to do that by hand and be like, "Oh crap, I missed one spot." Yeah, which means you so. can do it across a giant code base without risk yeah. or with with less risk. Less risk, I should say. Yep. And if need be, we can look at the actual JSON object and see, OK, that's how that's doing. And that's what we need to go down. Just like Mike pointed out, oh, it should be ID, not just straight. So we, we actually can actually visualize it. So um, This also helps with some of, the, some of the build pipeline tools we use that take our JavaScript and transpile it into a different format or oh. ES5. Yeah, <laughs> Or we do analysis of our JavaScript code. We can write some of our own tools to make sure we're following either some good coding standards mm -hmm. or uh, to take care of some yeah. rough work, some mm -hmm. tedium that we can automate yeah. instead of everything in manual. So it means we can fix issues in the tools we use, because mostly I doubt we would go down to the AST level ourselves. Well, but we can use some of the other some, tools. Yeah. But knowing how they do it, if we find a bug, we can fix it. Also, Esprimo was created by the same guy that built PhantomJS. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty well maintained and pretty popular. So. Makes me think of fan of the opera. Fan of the opera. <laughs> and all you can see how you can do this, the power of it. It's also the issue of core competency. You know, <laughs> <laughs> making sure we can, because compilers have been doing this forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think like let's say we talk about it, the building, but they've never been exposed, right? Yep. Yeah. And where Josh can hear. It's pretty yeah, much completely right, exposed, things, yeah. But I just thought it was interesting how, in the example, I was starting to notice, oh, you're trying to undo some of the dynamic and fluid, na <laughs> fluid nature of JavaScript, right? We're trying, to, we're trying to remove these yep. I guess features. <laughs> this is basically what uh, Facebook's flow does, too, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, that's it's Facebook's basically flow. basically taking that's and saying, hey, you're going to add this extra type inference that JavaScript doesn't know, but I'm going to use that to do some other stuff yeah. for you. So just in, in our application manager code base, we do pretty much everything other than CoffeeScript and maybe Istanbul. I tried to add that at one point, which kind of 
It's called coverage. It was called oh, coverage. Right. Oh, Jake is working. You're working on that again. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to remember. Oh, okay. I was like, I know that name, but I can't remember. Because Karma, what it is. Karma uses um, code cover, Karma cover, or something like that, which is what that's doing. It's wrapping in Istanbul. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, it gives you code coverage. We're we're doing Uglify JS, I think. In our the funniest. It's just a minifier. Um, yeah. Which is the funniest thing with, thing to me with all the stuff we're doing with JS. That is exactly what we're doing. Like, oh, it's really, <laughs> it's really flexible and it's typing. Let's add more typing yep. to it. Yep. But, yeah. Like with with some of the uh, ES code gen, um, I just showed you format and indent style. There's also stuff like semicolon. If you want to force that, mm -hmm. um, you can just say ignore all semicolons, and that's fine, right? So you can make it as loose or as strict as you want, and I guess that's sort of what ESLint lets you do. You can turn on as many rules as you want or turn them all off. So. so did we really get down to the compilation level of JavaScript? Yes. Really I mean, that, that's, that, well, that's how the SpiderMonkey API parses it. Yeah. Uh, and that's been exposed through that API um, that we're using it through Esprima. So we are actually looking at what the compiler would see and kind of make sense of it. Yeah. We're just modifying it before we send it through the actual compiler of the browser. So if like you want to create your own rule to take off like the far most left parentheses or something like that, or right parentheses. Yep. You, you don't like variables that start with W? Create a rule. Okay. Hey, don't create a variable with the word W in it. It has to say just W. 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 <laughs> it's got to be two Vs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we're going through the parser, we're parsing everything as a compiler would, and then yeah. modifying that. Well, essentially, because JavaScript is JavaScript, like, yeah, you're, you're doing that beforehand, and then you're feeding that code into the browser or to Node, which is then doing its thing mm -hmm. with it. So, which is why it's like, sure, you can replace spaces with Cartman. Yeah. Node's not going to be nope. happening. You try to <laughs> no, run it. no. But you can do that yep. if you want. Turn every case of right now into right now. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> super, super scope base. Yep. And, we, <laughs> and we could do that as a Babel plugin, so it only does it on a bill level, so you'd only see it on the output, but you wouldn't see it where it's never coming from. Source code. <laughs> You've never seen the source code. Yep. code. You could go through and look through, through the much. transpiled code, but good luck. I'll probably throw you out the window. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's wrote right now. <laughs> Yeah, if it ever is visible screens to the user, though, you'd be in trouble. Yep. Well, the thing I was thinking, <laughs> I guess. To reverse and actually write your code that way. In right now, and then put it back into right now. Yep. So no one will know. Actual. Well, that allows you to write, like, essentially your own language type. <laughs> yeah. What I, was trying to, what I was trying to figure out, which would be really useful, is like you're co genning out to a different file. Mm -hmm. But what I would have loved that to be able to do. It's just it's tricky. Editing. It's an auto formatter, basically auto -formatter. on save. It's like, but that would be a little weird. Probably. Yeah. I thought about that. That would make things a little bit bad as you're trying things out because now you're modifying your base code. No, I know. And you would be just keep so, modifying yeah. the modified yes, version. Yes, so. Lint does have some yeah. like auto formatting yeah, things it can it do does. now. So like as you save, it's like overwriting the file. Yeah, I mean it's it's FS right. It's a file system. You have rewrite if it exists and just force it. It will do that for you. Yeah. If you can um, do some kind of Babel watch, I bet you can do it. Well, it's like yeah, because no, you can do it right here. I I've mean, been using like really all I'm all I'm doing is um, you just would want some kind of watch. So right uh, here, or you can have a trigger on Vim on write call it and do it, which is my output file is just writing doing the write file. Yeah, you could write it to just write it to the same, same file, file name without any kind of thing there. Yeah, whatever the filing comes in, that's it. Because I was like trying to think of, like code gens are not that useful for us, uh, other than transpiling it. Yeah, except if you were to use it for something like that, because like Go format is really nice mm -hmm. with Rust. They have an equivalent Rust format, and it's awesome to write it and then just save it, and it fixes anything yeah. I screwed yeah, yeah. up. So. So even just cogen alone, if you just want to force this and then force, um, I think it's uh, semicolon, <laughs> semicolon true. Now you don't even have to put semicolon, and you just say, all right, replace this for the same file. Yes. And now as soon as you save, and as soon as you run it through the the build process, it'll immediately add those spaces and the semicolons for you in your code. So. Yeah. That's where that stuff would be useful, is to have auto formatters to make our lives yep. easier. 
especially on a huge code base. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, we would like you to write code in the same format, but. <laughs> yeah. Automatically. Automatically, yeah. I mean, they have auto fixers, like Sam said, but. Just let freaks out, and it's like, I'll just fix it all for you. Don't worry. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could totally do all that. Instead of telling me about it, just. Just do it. it. Yeah. As yeah, soon as I say and that's what they're doing. Like, yes, it has a, some of those ones that it knows it can easily fix. Like, oh, I'll just put a space here. Like, yeah. It can do that. That would make ESLint more of a backseat driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you screwed up. You Let me fix that for you. Yeah. I was getting there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do it on stage, not as no. I'm like, Yeah. Somebody goes, somebody goes, shoving it in. I kept typing it in. You can do it live because everything here is web capable and node capable. So you like that's how some of the the demos work. Um, so if you go to the streamer, yep. Certainly so find it. Source rewrite. So okay, he's just using that to just convert it in line right here. Um, Online parsing, so that gives you that for the tree, and I think this changes as you do it. Also, oh, you, oh, it's probably like has a delay. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a delay, but yeah, cool stuff, guys. Go do cool stuff with it. Go rewrite like resharper for uh, JavaScript. As I was saying, if you don't like JavaScript. Play around with Rosalind, which lets you do some yeah. other things. What's up? I had to hex you guys. You guys are good. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs>